The actuarial career attracts tons of high-level, intelligent, growth-oriented people, but some of them have a tendency to overthink things a little bit. And what I mean by that is that some of them want so bad to make the right decision about whether or not they should pursue the actuarial career that they sometimes end up talking themselves out of it for reasons that aren't really justified. So in this video, I'm going to share with you five bad reasons, yes, bad reasons, that smart, high-achieving individuals sometimes decide not to pursue the actuarial career even if they think it would be perfect for them. I'm Bria, an associate of the Society of Actuaries and founder of the Actuary Accelerator community where we train future actuaries how to become top candidates and get their very first actuarial job without an internship. Reason number one is that they think the actuarial career is way too competitive and that there's a very low chance of them actually being able to get a job. And no wonder people are thinking this. Whenever you read forums about the actuarial career or comments on YouTube videos or if you talk to other people that have tried the actuarial career you hear all these negative stories about how people had X number of exams passed and they still weren't able to find a job. You hear over and over again how some candidates sent out hundreds of applications and weren't able to find a job. While it is true that the actuarial career is competitive the majority of the candidates that are applying for jobs usually aren't qualified enough at the time they apply for these jobs. In our actuary accelerator community we help future actuaries go through the different phases of their actuarial journey they start in the beginner phase move to the rising phase then the intermediate phase and then move on to become top candidates what I've noticed though is that the majority of future actuaries that are applying for jobs are unknowingly still in the rising candidate phase they often don't even realize that there's more they can do to really stand out so on the outside this makes it appear as if it's extremely hard to find a job and that the chances of getting one are really low. But if you actually work your way up to becoming a top candidate, then it's inevitable that you will be able to find a job. It's just a matter of time. Reason number two is that they think they're starting too late. I have had people come to me considering the actuarial career in their 20s, their 30s, their 40s, and sometimes even their 50s. And they ask me whether they should even bother trying to get a career in the actuarial field. They often have the misconception that if you want to succeed in the actuarial field, then you've got to start very early on in your career, even while you're in school. They think that companies are out there looking for the fresh young grads right out of school, not the more mature career changers with no actuarial background or education. But that is not true. On this channel, we've featured tons of members of our Actuary Accelerator community that have successfully been able to transition from their previous career into the actuarial career using our top candidate method. Truth is that part of becoming a great candidate for actuarial jobs requires things like related experience, proven communication skills and technical skills, and icing on the cake is if you have experience with business or insurance, or if you have some of the soft skills that employers are looking for. As a career changer, these are probably things that you'll have experience with in your previous positions, and those things will allow you to compete with the fresh young grads that really haven't been able to establish that experience yet. So actually, career changers tend to be able to skip a lot of the earlier stages of the actuary journey like the beginner phase, the rising candidate phase, and they tend to be able to start in the intermediate phase and this is where they really start to specialize in the actuarial field. It generally means a fairly quick transition into the actuarial world and lots of opportunities. Quick side note here though, I do want to mention that yes there are going to be companies out there that do want to just hire fresh grads and that's fine, they can do that, but there are also tons of companies out there that are totally willing to hire someone that's a career changer as a career changer, those are the companies that you'll just have to focus your attention on when it comes to job search time. Reason number three is that they are scared to fail. I'm not going to sit here and say that becoming an actuary is easy. I'm not going to say that you're unlikely to fail along the way or make mistakes. But one thing I do know is that people that are interested in the actuarial career are usually very determined people. So determined that when they set their mind to something, they do not give up. And that's one of the reasons I think that the decision to go all in on the actuarial career can be really tough because we don't like to fail and we know that once we start something, we are not going to give up until it's complete. We want to master everything we do. So yes, you probably will fail an exam, but if you want to master what you do, then failing is pretty much inevitable. We learn from our mistakes. All the Olympians that we watched last month in the Olympics, they all failed along the way. They all made mistakes along the way. 
You do not get to mastery without learning what not to do. And that's what failing is. It's learning what not to do. You just cannot reach that level of mastery without failing along the way. So what if you fail? Failing isn't a negative thing, although it is often perceived that way. But failing really just means that you tried something, it didn't work, and now you've got to try again a little bit differently. It's not definite. It's not the end of the world. It's just something that happens. You move on and you keep going. Almost every successful actuary has failed at some point in their journey. So it's really not a big deal in the actuarial world, especially. Reason number four is, well, before we get into that, if you have been enjoying this video so far and it's been helpful for you, could you please give it a big thumbs up so that it can spread to others that are considering the actuarial career? I would appreciate that so, 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 so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, reason number four is that they're taking advice from the wrong people. Most people in our life can be put into one of two categories. There are the people that have gone after their dreams, achieved big things in their lives, and not let them get held back by fear of failure. The others in group two are the people that have always stayed on the safe side. They've never taken risks. They've always talked themselves out of going after big goals and probably haven't achieved much up to this point in their lives. Unfortunately, those people in the latter group can often be pretty influential on us. They tend to try to convince us that our big goals are just way too ambitious, dangerous, risky, and that there's so much probability of failure. And when we listen to them, sometimes it starts to get to us. We really start to believe that maybe what they're saying is right. But if we spend more time talking to and surrounding ourselves by people that are in the first group, the dreamers or the high achievers, the ambitious people that we actually relate to, then we'd be very unlikely to find any of them trying to deter us of our goals with all the what ifs. So if those people have been influencing your life and your career decisions, then you have got to stop having these conversations with them. I mean, what is really the worst that can happen? Is it really going to be as bad as they're saying? What if it all works out? What if your actuarial career turns into something that you can't even imagine right now? You'll never know unless you try. This is why surrounding yourself with like-minded people people is pretty much essential if you want to make it in the actuarial career. We can't let fear-minded people hold us back and fill us with internal fears and worries too. Instead, we have to prove them wrong. Reason number five is that they get overwhelmed with the long actuarial journey. Sure, the actuarial journey is long and you definitely need to be aware of that and prepared for it. It can take five to 10 years to become fully qualified, sometimes longer. And if that's just not something you're up for, that is totally 100% fine. And it's actually a good reason to not go into the actuarial career. But sometimes I think people see this long journey and everything that's required and it overwhelms them. They feel like passing all of these exams is a huge daunting task and that deters them from pursuing the career at all. And trust me, I want to say here, I completely 100% understand this. There were points in my actuarial journey where I was feeling the same way, but I do want to give you these four things to remember. One is that there are little incentives and bonuses along the way whenever you pass an exam. And this is one of the ways that I continue to stay motivated throughout my actuarial journey. Because whenever you pass an exam, the company that you work for will either typically give you a bonus or a raise, sometimes both. So you constantly have these financial incentives that really help you keep going and pushing through. Two is that you most likely do enjoy learning. You like studying, you like improving yourself and self-development, but chances are, you may not feel like you want to do that constantly. The good news is that you don't have to. Once you pass an exam, it's totally fine to take a few months off, enjoy your life, do things that you actually want to do. You don't have to be studying constantly month after month after month after month after month. Number three is to surround yourself with others that are going through the same journey as you. When you see that others are doing the exact same things as you are, then it kind of turns into a lifestyle, you could say. When you see other people doing those things, you start to realize that you're not alone in this and it helps to keep you motivated and pushing forward even when things get tough. Number four is that by working in an actuarial position, you are going to be able to open up so many doors for yourself. No one says that once you get into the actuarial career, you absolutely have to stay in this career for the rest of your life. No, you can change careers at any time. Your skills are going to be so valued in other careers that it's not going to be an issue if you decide you don't like the actuarial 
actuarial career or that you just aren't up for the long journey, you can quit at any time if you want to because your skills are going to be so valuable elsewhere as well. This is a career journey. It's an adventure. You have absolute control over where it goes and if there's ever a time you don't like it, you are not stuck. So really, why not just try it? What have you really got to lose? So those are the five bad reasons to not become an actuary. A few weeks ago, I shared a video right here about the top three reasons to become an actuary. And if you combine those three top reasons to become an actuary with these top five reasons to not become an actuary, then I think you'll be pretty much set on deciding whether the actuarial career is the path that you want to take or not. That's all for this week. I will see you next Tuesday. Bye for now.